The Rebbe, when the previous Rebbe passed away, the Rebbe said that in the first year, Chabad does not make his him, but Chabad tells stories about the person. Mr. Robert Morgenthau, or who, as I know, as Robert Morris, Robert Marcus, Ben Henry, Morgenthau, the DA, the long a DA for many years of Manhattan Borough, passed away in January. Uh, and uh, happens to be he was 100 years old, and uh, unfortunately he had a non-Jewish wife, and therefore he had non-Jewish children. He didn't have anybody left uh, on the Jewish, uh, as a Jew, so we will tell, tell a story that he, uh, a reference to him, which I think is Le'eli Nishmas, it's also for the elevation of his soul. Mr. Morgantor, as it is known, was a man of integrity, of law and order, and he wasn't a, uh, he wasn't, he was a no-nonsense DA. Interestingly enough, that when he ran as DA in Manhattan, he ran on all four lines, Republican, Democrat, Independent, and Liberal. On all, there was no one, there was no opposition. He was a very powerful man, and he was a person that was not afraid of anyone except uh, people that obeyed the law. He respected people that obeyed the law. By, by, by divine providence, I ran into him when he was still a U.S. attorney in the late 60s, early 70s, in the Southern District. And it was the first time I put on film with him, and he got to like me, and I got to like him. When he became a DA in Manhattan, I continued to visit him in the beginning, once a year, before Pesach, and to bring him Shmura Matzah. Eventually, I started to see him twice a year, before Hanukkah too, and then I began to see him almost every month. When he, he was always very proud of his Jewishness. He always used to tell me of, the, uh, of, of his grandfather, of his father who served as the treasurer secretary under Roosevelt and that he served in the Navy and during the uh, World War II against the Nazis. And he, whatever, he, whatever he could connect to Judaism, he would tell me he also was the one that built the Holocaust Museum in Manhattan, he was very proud of that. And he took me for a tour to the Holocaust Museum. And he loved me to such an extent that when people used to wait in the waiting room, and many people waited in the waiting room to see him, I, I had no idea who they were, and they of course had no idea who I was. Every single person who waited in the waiting room, usually the secretary would come in and call out the person's name and he would go to see him. When it was my turn, Mr. Morgan to himself would come out of his office and we would shake hands and he would hug and kiss me. In the beginning, I didn't realize what was happening, but I realized when I think back that the reason he was hugging and kissing me wasn't because of me. It was because of being a Jew, an Orthodox Jew, who he loved and respected. And because of my connection with him, he started to attend a Seder and he did other things but he was very far, because when I asked him one time what his Jewish name was, he says he has no Jewish name. He told me that his name was, as I said before, Robert, Marcus, and his son, his father was Henry. So we are going to tell, I'm going to tell you a very unique story, which is very, which is clearly not publicized. And uh, I had the merit to be involved in this story. It happens to be that, as you know, as everyone knows, Rabbi Chadakov was the Rebbe's personal secretary and was called the chief of staff, confidential secretary of the Rebbe. One day in the middle of the 70s, or maybe it was already in the 80s, early 80s, maybe it was the early 80s, uh, Rabbi Chadokov, uh, I received a call from the Rebbe's office and Rabbi Chadokov would like to see me. When I came into Rabbi Chadokov, he told me the following. Being that you know Mr. Morgantor and there is an issue that the Rebbe would like for you to get involved with. Rabbi Moshe Feinstein, the Godel Hador, was going to be indicted by Mr. Morgenthau. And I should see to it that you shouldn't indict him. Now, I have to tell you, I was a bit taken aback because knowing Mr. Morgenthau, he was a man of law and order. You could not talk to him about doing favors. He was not he was not shy. He was not. He was not that type of a guy. If you violated the law, you violated the law. 
So how, how am I going to go and tell him not to indict Rabbi Moshe Feinstein? And I asked Rabbi Hadakov, could I say this in the name of the Rabbi? He says, no. You go to Mr. Morgenthau and see to do, to do whatever you can that he shouldn't indict Rabbi Moshe Feinstein. So I walk out of Rabbi Hadakov's office. I realize I have the mission of the Rebbe, so I also have the Koyach of the Rebbe, the empowerment of the Rebbe, and clearly my entire being with Mr. Morgato was always as a Shliach of the Rebbe, and as the Rebbe many times says, that a Shliach, although he's independent from the Mishalea, from the, but nevertheless he could become one with the Messenger if he, at certain, at certain conditions, which I'm not going to go into now. So here I am with this kind of a mission. I call up Mr. Morgato, I knew his personal secretary, Ida. And I call up Ida, and I say, who, who didn't pick up any phone calls from just, I wasn't the regular secretary. I said, Ida, I gotta see Bob, Mr. Morgenthau, right away. What is it about? I said, it's, it's an emergency. So she arranges me, for me right away for the next day an appointment. I come into Mr. Morgenthau and I start explaining to him. You know, Bob, I used to call him by his first name, Bob. Of course, when other people were there, I used to say, I would call him Mr. Morgenthau. But privately, I called him Bob. I said, Bob, you know, there is such a, uh, there is such a th situa thing in the Jewish religion, a rabbi. Then there, are, then there are rabbis, a rabbi of rabbis. Then there is a Talmudical scholar that is not just a rabbi of rabbis, but he is way above that. Such as Rabbi Moshe Feinstein from Manhattan, of where he was, of course, a DA, and the person that you're looking to indict. And he looks up at me, because he doesn't really know everybody that he was going to indict. He had, a, he had a, a staff of 400 people. They were working on it. Now, he wasn't a, and I said, and to indict him would mean, first of all, I said, there was no question whatsoever that he had no idea what, whatever they were doing in the school. He had no idea. He was, he was a man that sat and studied day and night. So he says to me, was he like the rabbi? I said, no. The rabbi is beyond that. The rabbi is spiritual. The rabbi is able to see the future. And Rabbi Feinstein was not able to see the future, but he's a Talmudical scholar, which tens of thousands of people ask him for his opinion and advice in Talmudical law. To indict him means stabbing every Jew in the back. He's quiet for a moment. He says, well, Rabbi, I never had a request not to indict somebody. I said, well, it's always a first. And furthermore, Bob, I said, you know me for quite a long time. I never asked you to do anything like this. You could imagine if I'm asking you to do this, it's not, I, I, I didn't, I, it wasn't taken lightly. I didn't sleep for three nights in order to think it over very carefully if I should do it. And finally, I decided it's really, I, it's talking about the Torah world and saving. And, and he for sure didn't do what he's accused of. Uh, I'm sure he had a bookkeeper, maybe the bookkeeper did it, but not him. So, he says, let me look into it. I said, does that mean you're not going to indict him? He says, that's what it means. I said, now I have another request. Every indicted person, immediately there's a news release that goes out. That's normal. They, they look for publicity. Would you do me a favor and not mention his name in the news release? He says, Rabbi, you're going a little too far. I will not indict him, but I have to mention the, 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 the yeshiva. While I was talking to him, he, was, he called his top criminal uh, assistant, and sure enough, they found out, he found out that the, the indictment was en imminent, any day going to happen, and he, on the spot, while in front of me, he said to him, I will discuss with you, we are not indicting the rabbi. We'll indict somebody else. Years later, I met a Talmud of a Moshe Feinstein who happens to be uh, a, do a doctor. And uh, we were talking this and that. He had, he, had a, he had a brother in prison. But anyway, so I said, uh, and he told me he was a Talmud of Major Feinstein. So I said to him, you know, I had a, this chus to take away Major Feinstein's indictment. I told him the kids of the story. So he says to me, wow, you know, we all, the Talmudim of Ramosha, the close Talmudim, we knew that Ramosha was supposed to be indicted. And then suddenly disappeared. We had no idea what happened. Think about it. The Rebbe thought of every Jew. And no one has the Rebbe that, but the Rebbe got involved. And I had the schus. Now on the other hand, 
Mr. Morgenthau, who ultimately did not indict him, so may this be for his alias Haneshama, for his uh, elevation of his soul, who unfortunately left no one else in this generation. Uh, there's no children and no one else that's Jewish. The buck stops here. He had a sign on his desk. The buck stops here. He, it all stops right there. So here I am telling a story of the Schusay. <laughs>